We've all been told over the past several years that fully autonomous or self-driving cars would be making their way onto our roads en masse by basically now. In fact, in 2015, Elon Musk said that we would have a fully autonomous Tesla by last year, as did Google. And it seems like that might be true. Waymo and Uber are testing their autonomous cars on public roads, and GM has announced this year that it's going to start producing a car that does not have a steering wheel. At face value, car companies seem optimistic that you'll have a fully autonomous car in your driveway by 2020. Which is why it sucks that you're probably not going to have a fully autonomous car in your driveway anytime soon. Why not? Well, to understand why it's hard to develop a fully autonomous car, it's helpful to understand the five levels of automation as defined by the Society for Automotive Engineers. At level zero, there is no automation. There may be automated signals or warnings, but you have full control of the car at all times. At level one, there's automated driver assistance. This can be things like cruise control or when your car will actually keep you in the right lane and is nicknamed hands-on as you still have to have your hands on the wheel while driving. Level two is occasional self-driving where the car can control both its speed and its position. This is for limited situations, so things like open freeway driving in the middle of the US where there aren't as many cars and the terrain is fairly consistent. And it generally doesn't account for things like obstacle detection, traffic, pedestrians, or anything else that you'd commonly run into while driving. This level is nicknamed hands off, although it's not actually recommended that you take your hands off the wheel while driving. Level three is called limited self-driving, where the car is in full control in certain situations. This includes traffic and road monitoring and emergency braking. And the car can inform the driver of when they need to take over. This is where I'd put things like Tesla's autopilot. And this level is nicknamed Eyes Off because the driver could theoretically watch a movie or send some texts, but would still have to be alert in the event they needed to take over for the autonomous system. Level four is similar to level three, but with the expectation that the car could handle pretty much everything in limited situations. This is to the point where the driver should be able to safely fall asleep or leave the driver's seat. And this level is called the mind's off level because your mind could be off and the car should still be fine. Finally, level five is something like a robotic taxi. So level four applies usually to certain locations. These are geofenced cars where they're not allowed to leave a certain geospatial region. And level five would be the car can go anywhere. This level is nicknamed steering wheel optional because in theory, you should not need a steering wheel in the car because the car can handle anything and go anywhere. And this is what GM is claiming to have started production on this year. Okay, so now that we've got our definition straight, what level are we usually talking about when we talk about fully autonomous cars? Well, normally we're talking about level five. In fact, we already see level zero through three in cars on the road today. But what makes that jump from level three to levels four and five so difficult? Well, two things really, humans and weather. Autonomous cars use deep learning or really, really large neural networks to make driving decisions based on massive data sets. As we've talked about in past videos, if your data set is really large and accurately represents the population that you're trying to apply it to, you can create a really accurate model that works really well in that population. When this isn't possible, researchers try to develop a model that can generalize. Say you have driving data that includes every kind of terrain except mountains, and you want to be able to drive your car on mountains. Well, the car might get to the mountain and say, okay, this looks like off-road, this looks like unpaved road, this looks like a hill, but it won't actually know how to handle mountain driving. Being able to take characteristics from old situations and apply them to new situations is something that we humans do all the time, but it's very hard to train an algorithm to do it. And driving itself is a form of applied generalization. We rarely encounter the exact same scenario with the exact same cars twice. In fact, we often encounter unexpected situations. A ball rolling into a street, a biker going the wrong way on a one-way street that we have to handle in real time. Researchers can generate situations that the car might encounter while it's on the road, but at the end of the day, there will always be a new situation it hasn't seen. One sad example of this was when a self-driving Uber killed a woman in March of 2018. The woman was pushing her bicycle across the road, not at a crosswalk, having just come off of an unmarked bike path. And the car first identified her as an unknown object, then as another car, and finally as a bicycle before hitting her. Similarly, a Tesla Model S misidentified the back of a white tractor trailer due to its high ride height and the bright reflection of the sun, 
and drove the car at full speed into the back of the trailer, killing the driver. In short, humans and situations, both on the road and in their cars, can be unpredictable, which makes it difficult to train a model on them. Weather is more predictable than humans can be, but it's still a challenge for autonomous cars. In particular, snow, night driving, and potholes continue to be a huge issue for autonomous car algorithms, and all of these situations are commonly faced on the road. One other reason why we don't have self-driving cars in mass actually has to do with infrastructure. So when we drive, we signal to each other. We turn on our turn signals, we might wave someone on. In other words, we communicate with each other about our intentions. Self-driving cars would need some way to communicate with each other too. Developing that infrastructure, such as a way for self-driving cars to connect to a city network to understand the traffic signal patterns, or connect to a larger network that could allow them to communicate with other self-driving cars on the road, would be challenging and expensive. And given that most states in the U.S. don't spend the money to fix the existing roads, I don't see it happening anytime soon. So will we ever have autonomous cars on the road? Well, Yes, but probably not level five autonomous cars. In the next couple of years, we'll probably see autonomous cars being geospatially limited or geofenced. So they'll be used in maybe certain cities or under certain weather conditions, but definitely not universally. As people get used to the technology, as the technology improves, and as the infrastructure starts to adjust to allow for this technology, we may actually see level five automation in the next decade. But what do you think? Do you want a fully autonomous car? Personally, as someone who lives in a city, the idea of driving in Boston, be it in a fully autonomous car or otherwise, is not particularly appealing. So I think they're really cool, but I'm also not in a huge rush to have one. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you like this video, you can let me know by subscribing to my channel and smashing that like button. You can also support me on Patreon. Thank you so much to all of my current patrons. Otherwise, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.